Welcome back to the world's best shows from Las Vegas. It's always nice to come to a new venue, a new hotel or a new casino with a new show. There don't seem to be that many of them around these days, but there's one new enormous entity called City Center, which has just opened in December here in Las Vegas, and it's taken the place by storm. I'm delighted to talk to Paul Barry, who is the uh, vice president of ARIA. Nice to talk to you. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Firstly, how the hell do you put something like this together? You actually put it together uh, one step at a time. When you open an enormous place like this or or a big place, you have to be so detailed and have a critical path that is so simplistic. Break everything down to its simple core and you take it one step at a time. Otherwise, you will get completely lost and completely enveloped with the millions and millions of moving parts that are happening all at one time. You have to set your road and you have to stay true to that road Stay true to your milestones, because if you don't, you'll never make it to the finish line. Right, let's start right at the beginning. This is part of the MGM Mirage Group that own things like the MGM Grand, the probably the most famous hotel in the world, and Mandalay Bay and things like that. You then came up with this concept of city center. Explain to our listeners who haven't been here or seen it how enormous a scale that this is. Sure, to put it in perspective, we sit on 67 acres, which is about the same size of Bellagio, if you will. Bellagio is 6 million square feet. We're 18 million square feet. So we're three times bigger than Bellagio. And to put that into, into context regarding big cities, it's if we look at New York, for example, we're about the same size as uh, Times Square, Rockefeller Center, and Soho combined. So we built a city in 60 months, five years from beginning to end. Design and construction in 60 months. I don't think there's another city in the world, maybe other than Dubai, that could pull this off, is it? Yeah, uh, you're, you're absolutely right. And, and really, it was a commitment to, to, uh, to the professionalism of all of the construction team. We had, we had 8,000 construction workers running full steam ahead in the 115 degree heat in order to accomplish this. And just some things that we all take for granted, just to how, to ha- how are the construction workers, where are they going to park? You have 8,000 of them, and you don't want them spending four hours a day finding a place to park. Just those little logistical things that had to be so detailedly mapped out uh, really created a fun, exciting project. Every minute you came in or every week you'd come back to the project, because it was going at such a fast pace, you'd say, oh, my gosh, this is done. Oh, this is now done. This is done. And that really kept the excitement of the entire property going all the time. And then uh, when we finally opened on December 17th and breathed life into the building was just a great day for us. You mentioned there are 8,000 people making it happen, but how many people behind the scenes worry about the color of the chairs or the shampoo in the rooms or where you're going to get people to park once they come to city center? Well, there was probably another few thousand of us that, that, were, uh, that were worrying about all of those details because a lot of times you take for granted, you mentioned you have shampoo in your room. Well, someone's got to figure out what it's going to be, what the bottle is going to look like, all those little details. So you had the construction side running and on parallel was the op was us operators uh, getting ready to welcome people. We call this to our home. We always welcome guests as if it's coming to our house. Uh, And it was a parallel approach. Thousands of us worrying about the chair color, the, the what's this going to look like? What's the horticulture going to be? What is the guest going to see when you look at this? And the devil is in the details. So you have to spend time digging in and digging in and digging into the details. Otherwise, it won't come out like you think. For me, Vegas is a bit like a Broadway show where there's so many people who make everything happen, but too many people can have too many opinions and bring the whole thing down. Who finally decides, no, you're wrong, we're going to go with pink for the chairs or we're going to go with green for that, blue for this? Ultimately, we have a a president of ARIA. His name is Bill McBeth and, and Bobby Baldwin, who's our chief executive officer of City Center, and Jim Mern, who's our chairman, and they ultimately will decide. And, and there were times where we'd have internal debates and it would come as a tie. And so it was kind of fun. You would go and you would present your case and, and another person would present their case and ultimately a decision was made. Because the worst thing that could happen on a project like this, with this fast pace and to this scale, is that you don't make any decision at all. You don't have time not to make a decision. So you make it and you move on. You don't necessarily look back, you look forward. Because if you get caught up in all of the details in terms of is it, you're not quite sure, then things slip. Remember when we mentioned before, you have to stay true to your, to your roadmap. 
And if you don't, it's very difficult to catch up and you just make a decision and you move on. The worst decision is no decision. Just tell us how many buildings there are, because when it's called city centre, it really is. There's several buildings, all different shapes and colours and sure. sizes. Sure. So, actually, uh, if we start where we are right now, Aria. Aria is the heart and soul, if you will, of city centre. And it's uh, 4,004 guest rooms. And it's really the middle of the complex, if you will. We also have Vidara, which is our fifth, we call it a 1,500-room boutique hotel. It's uh, a, our condominium hotel. Uh, we also have... Uh, a Mandarin Oriental, which is about 400 hotel rooms and 225 residences. So you can actually, you can have a hotel room there or you could purchase a residence. We have Veer, which is our two uh, tower, all residential unit, 670, give or take, pure residential, no hotel component. And we also have Crystals, which is our 450,000 square foot retail and entertainment district. Uh, all kind of brought in together towards one to create city center. And what's great about city center, when we went, when we started the project, the whole idea was to do something Las Vegas had never seen before, had never been part. It's the maturization of Las Vegas. It's the urbanization of Las Vegas. Many different ways to say it. And as you've walked around, you'll notice it's, it's really an unthemed development because it's all about being a city center or, or our theme is art, architecture and design. And we encourage in this whole concept of exploration and discovery and people can walk around and look at the different art. Um, and, you'll, and as you've noticed it as well, there's, there's art around this place. There's architecture, there's design. So we understood city center is much more than a collaboration of hotels. It's not just a hotel development. It is truly a city center where you do have art, you do have architecture, you do have design. You can walk around and enjoy everything that the complex has. You don't necessarily have to stay here. And that's what's great. It draws you in for many, many different reasons. And we happen to have world-class hotels here as well. So that's part of the environment if you stay here or you can come as a local and be attracted to everything that we have. The other thing you have is a big show that I'm looking forward to seeing tonight. It's called Viva Elvis. We're going to take a piece of music from that, and then we're going to come back and talk business because you've done this in one of the worst economies possible and won an achievement that you made it happen. We'll come back with Paul Barry next, the vice president here at Aria in Las Vegas. We're back in Las Vegas. That's from Viva Elvis, which is on here at Aria, which is just a tremendous new hotel and casino. It's hard to describe for anybody who hasn't been to Vegas how big your hotels and casinos are because they are on a scale bigger than anywhere else in the world. That is true. And and Aria, though, is such a fantastic place. And from the moment that you walk in, you're met with this contemporary design and and you're met with uh, the whole sustainability concept and, and our commitment to the environment. And it's just a wonderful place to come into. And, and ex- we, we talked earlier about this whole concept of exploration and discovery. Everywhere you, where you walk around, Aria, you'll see something that you haven't seen before. And we call them wow moments. And you walk and say, oh my gosh, this moment is better than the last one until the next time you get to the next wow moment, which is better than the one you just saw. Uh, so that's what really makes Aria so spectacular and so different. It's, it's nothing like anyone has seen in Las Vegas or for the world for that matter. It's just an urban contemporary environment that, is, that it welcomes you with, with luxury and, and people enjoyment. And you can see the smiles of people's faces as they walk around. It's just a fun place to be at. And ultimately in Las Vegas, you want to have fun and, and we deliver. Paul Barry is the vice president here at Aria. And what's interesting, you're probably not going to like this too much, but my perception of Vegas old time is that it's a bit down market, a bit cliched. It was almost like a theme park. It seems like you've gone away from that now. It's classier, it's higher end. Certainly when we look around here, this ain't no Disney resort, is it? We, uh, we, when we built Aria, we built a building that would stand the test of time. Good times, bad times in in a building that would be iconic and as we mentioned it is not a themed resort it's just all about contemporary urban design and and when you walk through as we mentioned these are such wonderful unique venues everywhere you look uh, that it's just it's just a place that las vegas has never seen before and that was the entire intention was not to create something that we've seen it was to create something that would change the landscape interior and exterior of Las Vegas forever. 
Don't you feel that our standards have gone up as much as yours have as well? We kind of want more for our buck now. We want better facilities in the room. We want a higher class of uh, hotel that we stay in. Absolutely. In today's day and age, with the economy still being difficult, people want to feel that they have a good perceived value. They want to feel that they've where they've spent their money, they want to feel good about it. And I think when you come to Aria, you absolutely get that feel. Again, because it's so different and so unique. People enjoy spending time here. They're comfortable. And when you're comfortable and you feel good about spending your money, the, the perceived value, well, that creates a win-win for everyone. And that's truly what we're doing. You're absolutely right. The consumer today has changed. People are still okay spending money, but they want to spend it where they feel they've gotten good value. Also, another interesting thing about this whole development is you did it at a time when everybody else was stopping. We looked around Las Vegas out in the hotel room and it is very clear that there are a lot of corpses all over Vegas of places that have just stopped. They've literally just standing bits of metal. You managed to fight through this economy, which is not surprising because you've got a great place to start with all these successful hotels. How difficult was it? Was there ever a point when you thought, shall we just knock this down and turn it into a big swimming pool? Well couple answers to your question yeah it, it was very difficult and there were times sure there were some dark days let's let's not pretend that there weren't there absolutely were um, but having said that you t it takes the courage to continue on it would have been easy to pack it in call it a day see you next year or whenever that came but the courage that we had to fight through it makes this moment even sweeter because there were many obstacles, more obstacles, uh, uh, easier to say, ah, see ya. But we, you, you fight through all of them and you keep going. You have to remember the mission and the end result. And yes, it was absolutely, it was difficult. And there were dark days, no doubt about it. But you keep working through them, you keep working through them, you keep working through them. You have commitment to what you said you were gonna do. You have the courage and the guts to get it done and we create a wonderful place. We said we were gonna open five years ago. We said we were gonna open in December of 2009. We did. We opened in December on December 17th. And of course, five years ago is a lot different than it was today, uh, but we stuck to our word. And you're right, there are many places that, that did not uh, open and that's okay. But we said we were gonna and we did. And we're very, very proud of that. And it, it's all about courage and perseverance. I have great sympathy for you as well because you're between a rock and a hard place. You're putting something together that we might love or we might hate, but you can't make any money out of it until it's finished. So for those five years, there's no way of turning any profit, is there? That, that's exactly right. You, you, you build something that ultimately design and, and, and all of these places comes down to what we think the customer likes and what we perceive the customer will enjoy. But you're right, clearly we're not, the slot machines weren't working a year ago and you keep having that commitment to the better cause. You, and you, it's the commitment to your belief that this is gonna be a p facility that will change Las Vegas forever. And when you buy into that mission, it becomes personal. And as it becomes more personal, it becomes part of your soul is in this building. And you do everything in your power to succeed because at least where we stand, failure is simply not an option. You do whatever it takes to make the building successful. And truly, I think that's one of our competitive advantages over, over everyone is we're gonna do what it takes to make this place wonderful. And as you can see, it is. We all have choices. There are so many places to stay in Las Vegas. If you want a $20 room, there are those there. This isn't what you're aiming at here. And what I love about it is, if you want to spend $500 on a great meal, you can, because there's a chef who will cook you that food. Equally, you can go to the buffet and get a very affordable, very well-cooked meal. You really have to cater for everybody now, don't you? And just having a room or a casino isn't enough. That's absolutely right. When people come to these facilities, and if you define high end, one of the things or the characteristics that I define is choices, options. So if you want to go to the buffet one day, that's fantastic. And if you want to go to the restaurant, $500 a meal, that's fine too. People love options and, and we have 16 restaurants and, and the spa and the, the Elvis show and a wonderful salon. And there are many, many options for people to go to and you can pick and choose what interests you. But the great thing is, look how many different venues and options you have under one singular roof. I don't think you can come here and stay your first time and get through everything. You just can't. And that's what's wonderful because people can come back the next time and the next time and have a completely different experience. 
Congratulations on getting this thing together because it is tremendous. It looks so beautiful and you did it in the worst of circumstances that nobody at MGM Mirage could ever have anticipated. You must be relieved sat here now seeing all these people enjoying what you've created. Absolutely. You, you sit here uh, and you watch people come by and, and it's an emotional thing. It's, it's a, as we mentioned earlier, it becomes part of your soul. This becomes your place. And you sit and you watch people and you walk them through and you, you tear up from time to time because it's a, it's a wonderful thing and you appreciate how hard it was to get to these moments. And, and you just, as people come by and they smile, it's just such a gratifying feeling. I wouldn't, I wouldn't trade the experience in for the world. It, it was, went from the best of times to difficult times, now back to the best of times in terms of you, you know, the place is open. And listen, the economy, we're far from the end of the economy. We all understand that. But we've opened and the wheels are moving and Ari is moving forward and people are here to experience it. And, and the word of mouth and the awareness is getting out there. And it is, people are saying wonderful things about the property. And at the end of the day, you look yourself in the mirror and you just smile and you know you were part of something that may never be done again, or at least not in, our, in, the, in the very near future. And, and you go home at night and you're proud. You're proud. Thank you very much for talking to us. Paul Barry is the vice president here at ARIA, which is tremendous. I hope we've done justice to City Centre. We're going to keep talking about it through the program because it is on such an enormous scale. It's very hard to do justice to the work that's gone into this. We're going to go to the spa later. We're going to talk to the stars from Viva Elvis, and we're going to visit some of the restaurants as well. So thank you for allowing us here and uh, being part of this new exciting project that um, I'm so glad to see. Thank you. Well, thank you for letting you come into our home. Thank you.